This is our third lesson on triggering. And as I mentioned when we started this video series, understanding oscilloscope triggering is very important. Thus far, we've mostly been testing signals that are simple, such as repetitive sine waves and square waves. But signals in the real world of electronics are typically more complex. You'll probably encounter more complex signals in some of your upper level classes and labs, and you'll definitely encounter more complex signals once you graduate from college and begin your career as an engineer. Hi, I'm Johnny Hancock, Product Manager for Keysight's InfiniVision Series Oscilloscopes. Let's get started and see how we can use edge triggering along with trigger hold-off to synchronize oscilloscope acquisitions on signals that come in burst or packets. So this is a FM burst signal or frequency modulated burst signal. When, when I say burst, you get a bunch of pulses, then idle, a bunch of pulses, then idle. From the previous lesson, we talked about auto versus normal triggering. You might think, well, the scope's auto triggering. It's not finding the trigger. It's actually triggering on edges. The problem is we need it to tell the scope to trigger on a specific edge. If I uh, let's press stop and see this waveform. Um, and if we look closer at it, you can see it's a sine wave at a lower frequency and it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up. So it's changing frequency as it goes across that burst. Now, if I if I press single there, it triggered near the end of the burst. It triggered on that edge. Press single again. Now it triggered somewhere in the middle of the burst, right at that point. So it is triggering. It's not auto triggering. It's not generating random triggers. What's happening is it's triggering on random occurrences of the edge. What we would like is for it to trigger on the first cycle of the burst and then not trigger until the first cycle happens again. We can do that with something called trigger hold off. So let's make a couple of measurements first. I'm going to turn on the cursors and I'm just going to make some timing measurements. What is the width of the burst? So I have a timing cursor there and a timing cursor here. And it says the width delta x is about 3.6 milliseconds. And how long before the next burst comes along? It's about 5 milliseconds. So I need to set a hold off value, and I'll show you where that is, somewhere around 4 milliseconds. I want it to trigger and then hold off, rearming for four milliseconds, then rearm the trigger, and then trigger on the next edge. Right now, the scope is rearming as fast as it can, and then, then so it's triggering on different edges. So let's go into the trigger menu, and there's a selection down here that says hold off. Right now it says 60 nanoseconds, so it's going to rearm very quickly. So let's change that to about four milliseconds. It's jumping right over what I want. That's probably close enough. It's about four and a half milliseconds. Now, I'm, I'm triggering here. I moved it off from center screen. It's rearming in here during the signal idle time and then triggering on the next edge again. And so now we've synchronized on these bursts. And so this is a very easy way to trigger on some fairly complex signals. Trigger hold off is a standard capability in all oscilloscopes, but many engineers don't understand how and when to use it. Basically, if the signal you are testing comes in burst or packets, trigger hold off is a quick and easy way to make the scope trigger on the first pulse of every burst. In our next lesson, we'll be exploring advanced triggering to help us isolate what I call problem type signals. See you in lesson 13. Go Carnegie Mellon Tartans. Go Scotty. <laughs>